Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Microtik LTAP LTE6 kit. It's a basically a, a kit form LTE router from Microtik Router Board. Now, this isn't going to be an in-depth review. We're basically going to take a look at the device, and I did some tests with it, which I'm going to show you. So let's go to the uh, to the top cam over there, and um, let's see what you get in the box. As you can see, I already uh, unpacked it. So the unit comes fully pre-assembled, and it's a sturdy uh, metal base with a plastic top. And inside of it, and we'll, we'll take a look under the cover here in a little bit, is a dual core 880 megahertz processor. It has a decent amount of RAM and some very nice options. For instance, it comes with three SIM card slots, a COM port if you want to control it without having a PC there or something like that, a gigabit ethernet port because there's an LTE six capable modem inside, so up to 300 Mbit, and then it has a host of power options using either passive PUE over the gigabit port, a special car plug where they give you a little cable which just has some bare leads on it you can connect somewhere, and then a barrel plug. Now the adapter that's included in the box is a 24 volt variant, 1.2 amps, and they also give you the gigabit rated uh, PUE, passive PUE injector, that basically anything with 12 to 30 volts can power this little thing. And well, uh, for all the interesting stuff in the box, that's basically it. Um, internally, this thing has a LTE 6 capable, so that's up to two channel or two tower connections, uh, 300 Mbit 4G or LTE connected, and then it also has two, two times two 2.4 gigabit uh, wireless, so also up to 300 Mbit. Um, let's take a quick look inside to see how that looks. Okay, it's open. I had to, uh, well, untape the antenna connections. The antennas are actually connected in the plastic top cover, as you can see here. And as I mentioned before, this is an LTE 6 capable modem. So it's able to make a connection to two towers simultaneously and through that provide up to 300 megabits of performance. Now I did some real world tests and we'll look at those in a little bit. Um, I didn't get close to 300 Mbit, but it, it, in my opinion, it was pretty good. Um, so looking inside, we see a little heatsink for the dual core 880 MHz processor, which is quite a lot. In my testing, I never got it above 3% CPU usage. So that's a nice thing because it has the uh, built-in kit modem, which is on the back side of the board. I'm not going to remove it completely. And that's in a PCIe slot. And that PCIe slot is connected to two of the three internal SIM card slots it has on the front. But there's another PCIe slot available. So maybe, for instance, in the future, when 5G actually becomes available, because I know... Uh, 5G has been all the talks recently, and I'm reviewing a 4G kit. But 5G is so new that I don't think it's really available anywhere in the Netherlands yet. Maybe some test sites. And by the time it, it, it is, it's probably a few years from now. But using this beefy processor that's inside of here, I don't think there will be any problem upgrading the PCIe modem in here to 5G and getting a speed boost like that. So um, there's some internal radios, as I mentioned, for the Wi-Fi. And for instance, this little thing I know is one of the 2.4 gigahertz antennas. Um, 
And here's the SIM slot, as I mentioned. There is a GPS inside, but I actually didn't test that part. So um, if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. And if you're interested in like me building a basic config, which I did for testing the LTE, LTE capabilities of this thing, let me know down in the comments and I'll do a dedicated video on that and how to set it up and show you how it works in the Microtik user interface. So here's another uh, wireless antenna. And other than that, uh, barrel jack, capacitors, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, there's not really much interesting to tell inside of here. But if you wanted to know how it looks, well, this is how it looks. Now, internals aside, which is always nice to look at, I've also done some real-world testing. So first, I hooked it up here in my little garage studio room, and I was able to achieve around 30 Mbit uh, down and about 20 megabits up, which is actually pretty good for inside because there's all metal shielding in the insulation and windows and stuff like that. Moving it outside using a longer cable and a PUE injector, I actually uh, put it on this little birdhouse so it wouldn't have any uh, obstacles or houses and walls and stuff like that near it, it went up to 50 Mbit down and still about 20 to 23 Mbit up. But in all that time, if you look at the interface here, you can see I only had one 10 megahertz connection. Now, I live very much outside of the city area, so it's very likely there's only one tower around here to which it can connect. So I, have, I do consultancy, IT consultancy for my day job, so I basically threw it in my car and I took it with me for a few days and did some tests in two different cities. Now, the first test I did was actually uh, the, the fastest test. I was actually uh, near the center of Breda. It's a city here in the Netherlands. And I was in some rural um, Woonwijk, um, yeah, just some rural residential area. And I put it on top of my car. <laughs> you know, and uh, I did some tests and I was able to get 100 megabits down consistently and around 25 megabits up again. But 100 megabits down is pretty good for over 4G. I know Wi Fi that's slower than that. Moving to a different spot in Breda, I was able to get around 80 megabits down, but it was actually getting 45 megabits up consistently. That's more than my home connection over cable. That's awesome. During these connection tests, you can also see in the interface that it had connection to two towers and it used one 10 megahertz connection and one 20 megahertz connection, thus resulting in the much higher bandwidth. So after that, I moved to a different town, uh, Den Bosch, near to where I live, and I tested in two spots there. And over those spots, I was able to achieve between 40 to 80 megabits down and 20 to 30 megabits up. Now, those two spots were near the freeway and it was quite busy. There was actually a traffic jam on that freeway at that time. So although, especially the, the last connection I tested had the best values in regards to signal to noise ratio and stuff like that, that I had seen, I think because there were so many cell phones around because of um, the traffic jam that was going on and being near a freeway and stuff like that, that actually the towers it was connected to but basically filled up with devices to which they all need to maintain a connection. And of course, more bandwidth will be being used at the same time also. So although this little Microtik could probably have been have performed faster because the connection to the towers was better, uh, probably the towers themselves couldn't handle much more. Speaking of the freeway, since I had my own SIM card in here because it has the beefiest connection, I also tried some... Uh, some prepaid stuff and things like that, but you get 3G or 4G with 100 megabytes. So if you do one speed test, it's gone. Uh, so I just used my own SIM card for my phone and I have about, I believe 25 or 30 gigabytes of data per month. So that was fine. Um, but I had it in there while I was driving for about 100 kilometers and my phone was connected to it and it had 4G connection speeds, no problem with this thing just in the car. For all the other tests I just uh, talked about, I had the unit outside of the car because while doing some measurements, I saw that there was uh, a lot 
of damping going on on the signal quality being inside of the car versus outside. But as I said, while keeping it inside, it had no issue roaming while driving on the freeway for about 100 km at normal freeway speeds. So, well, this was going to be a quick review, so conclusion time. I think for 200 bucks, this thing is an excellent kit. There's no assembly necessary, there's a nice uh, LTE 6 category modem already built in inside. It has a good antenna inside, or at least connection wise, I, I never found a spot where I didn't have a connection actually. Um, and for me, it being a router board or a Mikrotik is a big advantage. This thing just runs router OS like you're used to. So next to being able to perform an ethernet or a wireless bridge to LTE or 4G or whatever it's called in your country, it can do much more since well, you have the power of the router OS in there. Um, so if you wanted to have everything run over a VPN, you can do that. If you wanted to make multiple SSIDs and speed limit those differently, you can do that or even route one of the SSDs over a VPN and the other just normally. Uh, if you wanted to do some routing or other kinds of things, well, anything you can do in router OS, you can do on this thing. And that, for me, is a very big advantage. So, with that said, no, this is not the fastest LTE router out there. As I said, this is LTE category 6, and there's much higher categories out there. Also, this can connect to two masts, and there's also modems out there which can connect to four, or even eight in an ideal situation, giving you much more bandwidth than this thing can deliver. But those can only be achieved if you happen to be in a very rural area where it can connect to lots of different towers at the same time. Moving even slightly out of those areas, you're back down to two connections, or for instance, where I live, or actually quite soon after I left the city surroundings, you're back to a single connection, so 30 to 50 Mbit, depending on connection speed. So for the usage, we got it. We got it for uh, our event business. Uh, we just wanted to have a way to have a, a laptop or especially a computer being able to make an internet connection where there is none or where it's too slow to do something with. Um, I didn't talk about latency very much. Generally, I would see between 20 and 40 millisecond ping with average being around 30, I would say. As long as you're not filling up download or upload completely, that actually remained pretty stable. And if you wanted to do some gaming over that, I don't think that would be a problem at all. So not the fastest modem out there, but with that said, and especially with 5G approaching, the platform this is built on is really powerful. I never saw it exceed about 3% CPU usage, and since it just has two mini PCI slots inside, once 5G actually is available in the air and 5G modems become available, I have no problem thinking that you can upgrade this device by just slotting in a little different card. It has a gigabit connection uh, for the Ethernet port, not 100 Mbit like the previous devices had. So using that, it has no problem upgrading to higher speeds in the future, I think. And as I said, for me, it being a router board and having the router OS on there with all its features is a definite plus and is worth more than the situations where a higher class modem would have maybe achieved a higher speed if you happen to be in one of those spots which has enough towers around you. So yeah, I really like it. It has a very sturdy base made out of metal and then a plastic cap. It's definitely meant to be used outside and screwing this to a wall somewhere or even a, a pole or something like that, uh, I think it wouldn't look out of place at all and it would do very nice. Um, so I think it's excellent. Now this concludes my little review. Um, if you'd like me to do a dedicated video, as I mentioned, about configuring this with a basic configuration and showing you how to do that in uh, Router OS and Winbox, let me know down in the comments. I'll have some affiliate Amazon links on there if you want to pick this up or some other Microtik products. And other than that, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.